Hi everybody, my name is Ziad Parker and you're joining me today on Sportycast, our social media platform. I have with me today Jacques Stolz. What's up guys? We're going to be discussing the Rugby World Cup semi-final coming up between Wales and South Africa. So Jacques, obviously yes. we're quite delighted that South Africa is in the semi-final. Um, I, if you can maybe shed some light on your situation at home since they're playing Wales. Uh, I'm not sleeping on the couch. Okay. So that's a good good start. Uh, yeah, it's very tense. Um, Sunday is going to be a big day. So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. I uh, got some bad news yesterday. Oh gosh. I uh, found out that Jerome Garcia is going to ref the game. So yeah, I'm not very happy about that. Hopefully he's fair. Um, but yeah. If you're a well supporter, I think you're smiling at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually something John Smith mentioned on the recent uh, Rugby Joe podcast. That, okay. Uh, not too impressed with the, the selection of Jerome as the ref, but like I always say, control what you can control. Yeah. And let's not worry too much about the ref. Okay. We've got to we've got to be a bit more clinical than we were in the quarterfinal with ball in hand. I know in the first half we squandered at least three opportunities. Yeah. So. In a semi-final where things are a bit tighter, I think we're going to need to be a bit more clinical and finish off all those opportunities that we get. Especially seeing as the Wales is one of the best defensive teams in the world. Yeah, the best. Stats-wise, they they've been rated the best team in the world for this year. Um, they've got all the stats when it comes to defense. So, be interesting. They the only thing that I think they might struggle with is their attack. So, just like you just said, we struggled to finish three mm -hmm. times. Yeah. They've been struggling to finish this whole tournament. They've been struggling to get tries. Yeah. And um, that's been a big problem for them game in, game out. And against us, I think, if they're going to come in and struggle to finish, you know, you've got to score tries to beat us, I feel, on, yeah. the, on Sunday. I mean, it, it also depends, right, in a tight game, the World Cup semi-final, they've been... Tons of them, if you go back in history and look, where it's actually decided by the penalties and drop goals. So, if this match goes the same way, do you think that the potential of a kicking duel taking place is quite high? Yeah, I, it's, it's, I was looking at the stats between the two of us uh, in tournaments, and we lead the, that stat by 2 to no. Uh, we've won both games, but both games have been very close. So, um, I don't really... I hope we're not going to play a kicking game. Right? I think they will be playing territory. Um, they're very one-dimensional when it comes to attacking. Uh, very basic. They don't, they're not like the All Blacks, you know, where they can counter-attack. They can, they can um, come from anywhere and score a try. Yeah. They're very basic, old-school rugby. They're going to come hard at us. Uh, so if we go in with the same game plan like we did uh, with Japan, I think we will probably lose the game. I think we've got to come with a positive mindset, play running rugby. Um, so I don't feel Fuff should be doing the kicking role that he did um, last weekend because yeah. I think we then we're in trouble. Uh, it's, it's interesting the points you make because you're talking a lot about scoring tries and attacking and, and playing a bit more adventurous yeah. as opposed to tightening it down. Recently in the media, Brendan Fenter has come out and said that the Rugby World Cup is not going to be won with great attack. It's actually going to be won by defence. And the, the summary that he did basically on the England and Australia game as well as the South Africa-Japan game, the stats show that both Japan and Australia dominated possession. Okay. And England and South Africa made way more tackles. And what they found was that, obviously, England beat Australia with like 40-16, I think the yeah. final score was. It's just that they counter-attacked really well. And if you look at the South African game, for the first 50 to 60 minutes, it was quite tight. And then we pulled away with a couple of tries towards the end. And according to Brendan Fenter, he feels that that is the way both games are going to go in the semi-finals, where you have to be really solid on defense and then counter-attack, which is quite interesting. Because another point that you brought up about the tries, the top two try scorers in the World Cup at the moment are Josh Adams from Wales with five, yeah, and uh, Makazoli Mapimpi with five. So the 
two top, top try scorers are going up against each other. It's quite interesting. Um, and then, yeah, obviously with defence being a big thing according to, to a lot of these guys in the media, I think we might see a quite physical physical game with a low score. Um, another thing to add to that, just to, to maybe just, as it will, it will take us forward, I think, is if you look at Wales, and the coach, one of the assistant coaches, Gareth Edwards, yeah. he's come out and said that the way they won the Grand Slam in the Six Nations this year was based on defence. So they averaged 14 points per game that they conceded. Whereas in this World Cup, they've conceded closer to 18, 19 points. I can see us going with a very similar starting 15. There might be one or two changes. And I think those changes are not going to be because of style or tactical or anything of that sort. It might just be worse, the fresher legs to actually go out and, and play in a bruising encounter just under a week um, after the previous one. Whereas I'm looking at the back line and thinking we're probably going to play with the same back line. And the only position that's up for debate at the moment is probably fullback. Really, yeah. Uh, Vanilla Ru has been struggling in this form. Yeah, so based on that, what do you think if we start with the back line? It's a bit easier. What do you think um, Rassi is going to announce tomorrow when he puts his squad out? Well, you've made some interesting uh, points there. And um, I've put my team down here yeah, and I've gone with nine Faf. Yeah. 10 Pollard, I think they will keep with those two um, I just I hope, like yes, I get the points that you're saying, but I hope that Faf is not going to play the same role because I've, I've personally felt like he didn't execute his role completely, even though he was man of the match mm. um, I would have actually given it to the guy that I can't stand, Dale Linda I thought he had a great game um, but for me, the way Faf was playing, and you could clearly see he, he had a certain role to play, yeah. um, but I think the execution of that role, I, I, I wasn't happy with. Yeah. But I think they'll stay with those two. I know there's been talks of maybe swapping Pollard with Yankees, um, which I think shouldn't happen. I think keep Pollard there, maybe put Yankees on the bench as an option. That's that, it. Yeah. that could be an option. Yeah. Um, wings I've stayed with Mapimpi and Colby I think the wings have been fantastic Mapimpi's been scoring the, um, the tries and Colby has been fantastic all round um, I saw Faf in a press conference uh, actually this morning um, where he was talking about how people counted him out in South Africa yeah. and he took the risk going to France where they said if you want to play in France you've got to be big and um, he's one of the smaller guys in the tournament, but he's probably been one of the best guys. And he's proven yet again that size doesn't matter if you've got, got the skill and the yeah. potential. Um, so, yeah, sticking with them. Centres, I'm going with Del Linda and uh, Laconio Am. I don't think that will change. I think they've been probably the most consistent throughout the tournament. And then I've actually gone fullback. I've gone with Willemser. Um but again, I've picked him based on trying that X factor that, that like you said, if it's going to be that tight, he's the type of guy that's going to break through and make something happen. So I've gone with him as an X factor um, because I feel like it's going to be a close game, but I think it's probably going to go by seven. That's what I put on Super Brew. Okay. So, so let's hope Super Brew let's, let's see, cause, uh, works for me. You managed to get off the basement. Yeah, 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 I'm 12 yeah. now. So, so well done, man. Um, so you've moved one up or two up? Uh, two up. Two I'm up. looking to, to make uh, the top six. So hopefully that happens in uh, the next couple of games. Mm. So yeah, let's hope I can get something, some more bonus points, hopefully margin points. Yeah, because the points actually increase now as you get closer to the end. Yeah. You actually get more points more yes. win and, and margin. But yeah, good luck to you. Um, just... To, to touch on some of the points that you, you made there now, I think looking at South Africa in general and across all sporting codes, they're not the type of, we've never ever shown the, I would say the ability or the, the knack of taking risks. Yeah. And after beating Japan with a solid game plan, I don't see there being too many changes. And I think Willemse would be a drastic change compared to, to what we've put out before. So the, if, if Leroux 
doesn't crack the nut in the starting 15, yeah. I feel it will be Francois Stein who comes in because he's a bit more solid, reliable, got the big boot, which is But he hasn't played in fullback yet for this tournament. Yeah. But so that, that's also me, quite a risk. For me, that's the only thing. But on that point, I don't think Leroux is going to be dropped at all. There's yeah. a lot of talk about his leadership ability and his, his experience in that back line because obviously it's not a, a very experienced group where Vanille Leroux probably is the most experienced. Pollard is there, the lender, but even the two of them, they don't have what maybe Vanille Leroux brings to the table. We obviously can't see it not being part of the camp. Yeah. But I think he'll keep his place. And the only way, which it's again coming back to what you said about the X factor, I think Willemser and Alton Junches one of them actually have a good chance of making the bench, especially if we switch from the 6-2 split to a 5-3. Then we might might require that X-Factor player because yeah. that's going to be important. So we'll touch on the bench a bit later, but I actually think that we are going to, to move to the 5-3, the which brings some of those guys in. And in general, I think our backline has performed really well and like you said with Fafter Clerk, he's had a clear role to play yeah. and he's played it. Yes, he made a couple more mistakes than he'd have liked to, but in general, he's sticking to his game plan, he's sticking to what the coaches want. Um, and I think that goes for the rest of the, the back line as well. They're not trying to do anything too flashy, they're keeping it simple, running good lines. I think we just need to look after the ball a bit more in the back line because the forwards do amazing work. They do amazing work to look after the ball, to set up phases, and when we decide to swing it to the back line, I think we have more responsibility to be more clinical and look after the ball a bit better because there were a lot of handling errors um, against Japan. So, the pressure, that, yeah. that stadium was packed with Jap yeah. Japanese supporters. I think so. it might be a bit different than that. Yeah, they've got an also, we haven't gone to the forwards yet, but Navidi's out, hamstring yeah, injury. Out the um, and they've brought up Owen Lane. Yeah, um, from the Cardiff Blues, so he'll be taking his place. Whether he'll start, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, that's a big blow for them because Navidi's been pretty good in the World Cup, yeah. and he's been utilised at the flanks and at um, yeah. eighth man. So big blow for them. Um, but I, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Like you said, they're actually five five at the moment. Okay. Okay. Out of the last ten tests that they've played. Um, the last two games, we've lost both games, the one in the US and the one in Cardiff. Uh, but interesting, both those games, Rossi was involved, but both those games we played like a B, C side. Yeah, I read something about And he that. said, he said it's going to be interesting because now he's got the whole squad to choose from. So he can actually choose his best yeah. squad now. And I think he's looking forward to it because I think he owes them. Um, the first time was in the US and we all know he was trying things there. He yeah. just came on board. The last time, same thing, he was resting players. He also didn't have the guys that are playing in the Northern Hemisphere. So um, that's not going to be the case this time. Mm. So, yeah, it's going to... Listen, it's, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tight, like you said. But um, I think the game's going to be won with the forwards. Speaking of forwards, what do you reckon... South Africa is going to go with. Right, so I've gone with one, two, three. I've gone with Kitsov, Bongi. I think Bongi's really been the surprise package for me. But is he going to be fit? Because he hobbled off before half time against Japan. Well, so far, there's been no um, any news that he's not fit. The only yeah. news that I've received or that I've seen is obviously Navidi. Everyone else, if, if he is, the Springbok camp's doing very well to keep it a secret. So um, I've gone with him. Uh, obviously, if he's injured or he can't play, Marks will come up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've gone with Pongi, Malabra. I don't think that will change much. I think Kitsov will just come in for Beast. Um, and then at the locks, I've got Elizabeth and Ruth the Offer. I've put them in there. Um, and then back three, still the same. Um, Peter Steff. Kulisi, captain obviously, and Dwayne from Yellen. So I've gone yeah, with think, them. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty much the same. It's a good point you bring up about Beast and Kitsov so switching. Yeah. And I don't know if that's something that they've thought ahead about where they rotate the two guys, but 
again, it all depends on how fit and how ready those guys are to start the game. Otherwise, I can't see him changing much. And I reckon it's going to be the exact same group that take the field. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's purely fitness now that that's going to come into it. Um, and then moving on to the bench, there's the debate obviously between keeping the split of 6-2 or, or switching it up to 5-3. And I reckon with this game and, and everything that's on the line, I think we are going to switch to 5-3. To and the guy I think that's going to miss out, unfortunately, is going to be more stiff. He's been a soldier for the yeah, so I think he's been playing really well. Yeah, um, he's been consistent over the entire year. But if we switch to to five forwards, unfortunately, one of the locks are going to miss out because of the versatility. Peter Stiff can move into lock. Should should we lose both locks? Um, so yeah, I think more step drops out, and that makes a spot available for a guy like Willem, so we have spoken about already, um, or possibly Elton Judges, but. With Stain obviously securing his spot on the bench, I think there's more likely that a guy like Willemse does does crack the nod. And it's interesting that, again, in the media, Eddie Jones has gone on record saying that everybody talks about the starting 15 and you're getting dropped, but he believes that rugby is now a 23-man game and everyone has their role. So if you're in the starting lineup or on the bench, you have a specific role to play. And how do you think that determines or how do you think that plays out with deciding on, on how to split the group? Well again you've got to look at game plan. What are we gonna do? So for me, if we're gonna look at playing similar rugby like we did last weekend against Japan, I don't see him going I, I see him going six two again. Yeah. Um, using the forwards, making it a boring game. Um, if we're gonna to look to be a, a little bit expansive, looking to score tries to win the game. Because um, I don't think Wales would uh, expect that because they've already, the Fords have already said when you play South Africa, you expect physicality, hard rugby, so they yeah. know what's coming. So I've gone with the 5 3 again, same as last week, which I was wrong. Um, they went 6 2. Uh, I've gone with Marx, Bees, Koch, Sneeman, uh, Herschel Yankees to obviously take over from Faf. Yeah. And then I've got Stain and LaRue. But I mean, did you mention Low? Uh Low, no. I've taken him out. I've given Stain on a go. Yeah, but then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Oh, seven. I've got one. Yeah, so Low will come in obviously as well. Still sticking on twenty two, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. So <laughs> I'll put, uh, yeah, low, come low, on. low, I'll probably put hey, maybe we just need twenty two. We're playing yeah. on Sunday. So score prediction. I'm going with, uh, and this is quite often, so I'm going with 20 to 16. It's been very close in that region, so I'm going with 20 to 16. To which team? Are you sitting on the <laughs> 20 to, to the 16 box, to the box? To the box, yeah. I think, uh, I hear you, but I think I'm going more along the lines of a penalty or a drop goal being the difference. So I'm going to keep it nice and tight. I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere around 18-15 to, to South Africa, obviously. <laughs> it's close, yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's going to be decided by the by a kick, drop goal, penalty, whatever the case is. Uh, but yeah, here's to hoping it's going to be a good game. Looking forward to watching it. By the time the game takes place, we'll know who's waiting in the final. Yeah. So looking forward to a cracker between England and New Zealand. That's going to be a good game. South Africa and Wales thereafter. It's been a good chat, mate. Let's uh, let's see what Rassi announces tomorrow and take it from there. Yeah, I think if if he comes out with the team, we'll have a better understanding what what, what route they're going for. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see what the starting lineup mm -hmm. is. Thanks for having me yet again. Once we get that lineup, we'll get back to you with some uh, some of our thoughts. Enjoy. Cheers, guys.